Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series and today what I thought I would share with you is probably one of the most interesting books that you could possibly purchase in regards to your Land Rover Series, Land Rover County or Defender Vehicle and this is in fact the workshop manuals that we require to work on these vehicles and maintain these vehicles. Now, there's a few tips and tricks in regards to how to get the most out of these manuals and I want to share with you why I have so many of them and there's a good reason behind it. So if you want to find out this and more, then you know exactly what to do. Click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too, but most importantly, stay tuned. So as you can see, a big old pile of books here. And what I'm going to do is I'll just sort of go back, we'll talk about the more earlier manuals and we'll move our way up more towards the, the county defender, the more modern times. Um, I'll leave the rest for Damon because that's his department. But this isn't all the manuals that I own and use. I've actually got another four manuals that I use for my Land Rover Series 1s because if you have a Series 1 between 48 and 53 then the parts and all the setup is different from 54 to 58 so therefore you have to have another couple of books for that and by four extra books I mean a workshop manual and a parts catalogue for each era and I'll talk about more about the two of those uh, later in the video now one manual that I don't have here with me today because it's in <clears throat> one of the vehicles somewhere here is the Series 2, 2A and 3 Haynes Manual. And I'll start off talking about that because it's actually a really, really handy manual to get and it's a very affordable one to sort of start off with. Haynes manuals are great. They've been doing it for years, as many of you know. They've done everything from, you know, the Death Star to Spitfires and goodness knows what else. But the manuals are very, very easy to read and it's very, very easy to digest the information out of them. And that's really one of the strong points of, you know, the Haynes manuals. The other good point of the Haynes manual is it's very easy to, I guess, divvy up the difficulty or the how challenging a particular task might be in regards to your series Land Rover. And particularly if you're starting out, you obviously don't want to pull the engine apart and go, oh, this was a bit harder than I thought. Would have been nice if they said that in the manual. So that's, that's where a Haynes manual is really, really good to start with. One other book that's really good to look at and you'd be able to find this on eBay, no problems at all, is the auto book. And this is obviously the series one and two manual. So it doesn't cover the 2A and it doesn't cover the 2A six cylinder variant, but basically everything up to that. Now, like the Haynes manual, it's a very respectable size book. And you'll see what I mean later on. But this is a great book. I've had this for a number of years. I got it second hand somewhere. And this basically sits in the toolbox in the Series 2. I have a workshop manual in every vehicle because you never know when something's going to come amiss. Now, many of you might say, oh, well, Jeff, you just keep it on your phone, you keep it on your tablet. I don't have a lot of luck with digital technology. I know. I'm making YouTube videos and I don't have luck with digital technology. Doesn't make sense, does it? Not a lot of things do. So I always go the analog way. And the other reason is I don't want to be stuck on the side of the road. It's raining, it's hot or whatever it might be. Trying to scroll through a little phone, trying to find a few little phrases out of a paragraph and a few specifications. It's much easier with these. 
I've got sticky notes for all the important chapters and chronicles and all the rest in the book so it works for me so anyway but as I've said a very condensed book now if you're starting to get serious about your series Land Rover particularly your series 2 and 2A and you're wanting to do a full-blown restoration then the Haynes manual isn't really going to get you all the way you really want to go back to where it all started and you really need to get yourself a set of the Land Rover owner's manual. And that's right, such a good car, you get two. I know, for one vehicle. How awesome is that? These are fantastic. The amount of information in this is incredible, and hence why you've got two volumes. But basically, it's got everything from how to rebuild your engine. Okay, that's not that surprising. But it's even got how to rebuild your Speedo in the vehicle. Now, I can't imagine that there would be very many manuals out there, particularly for newer vehicles, that would go into that much detail. And I know for a fact that's the case. So these are really, really well worth trying to get yourself a, a set of. Now, these are actually or have been reprinted and you can actually get a brand new crisp couple of volumes off uh, Dr. Google but they are quite expensive I think it's probably close to a hundred bucks for the the two volumes or more with postage so it's well worth having a little troll through eBay and a few online bookstores or secondhand bookstores I should say and uh, just seeing what's actually out there because you might be able to get both uh, you know, half that price but definitely well worth having and look even if you splash out and you pay the full top dollar price for it within six months you you're gonna make it back guaranteed guaranteed so they they are fantastic but I tend to find when I'm going away on a big trip they're a bit bulky and when I'm going away on a trip I don't really envisage having to rebuild the entire engine. No. So that's where I find taking a, a lighter manual saves space, saves weight, and it's got all the little details in it that I need just to keep the vehicle running. Now, moving on to the Series 3, it's obviously a bit more of a condensed manual, and I do have a Series 3 manual, but it's not allowed inside the shed because it is an original manual in the elephant skin vinyl binder um, so that stays inside otherwise greasy mitts will get all over it but basically it's just one book so it's much much easier to um, carry around with you but if you own a series 3 and particularly like myself you own a series 3 stage 1 the series 3 manual won't be enough you'll actually need a repair operations supplement manual for your stage one variant and this basically covers everything that the stage one has in it and it actually goes into a lot of detail uh, a lot more detail than I guess more uh, modern publications go into in regards to these vehicles so it's well worth trying to get yourself a copy of this and they have actually reprinted this also but particularly for the LT95 it goes into a heck of a lot of detail and that brings me on to my next manual, which is the Land Rover Defender County 11090 manual. Now this is a really, really good manual. It's very easy to, I guess, follow, very easy to get the information out of it. The procedures on how to actually pull stuff apart are a lot more refined in this, whereas in the Land Rover Series 3 Stage 1 manual, they're much more focused on particular tasks. They're not focused on doing a complete overhaul of a transmission or a axle assembly. So you kind of have to, you know, figure out how, how would you do it. Um, get a bit imaginative, I guess. So, you know, that's probably the only pitfall. And the reason why I'm talking about both of these, this and this is because the stage one has the LT95 gearbox it has the Salisbury differential in the back and it has the Rover differential in the front pretty much the same as the the county or the 110 or yeah 110 not the 90 
So that's where cross-referencing between your manuals can actually really help. And it's all the, also the same with the Series 3 manual. It doesn't have some of the information that you'll find in the Series 2, even though the engines are pretty similar between the two. So that's where it's always good to have a few points of reference. Now, moving on, obviously, and the reason why I have the Land Rover Defender 110 manual is because of the Parenti that you see here. But I also have, courtesy of Damon, a nice Christmas present he bought for me a few years ago, a Land Rover General Service 110 manual. And this is really, really good. The information in this is absolutely staggering. But because it is a Australian Army or ADF manual, uh, they like to do things differently. So figuring out what to do and how to do it and all the rest is actually broken down into a number of different categories. It's broken down into light grade repairs, medium grade repairs and heavy grade repairs. So you've kind of got to decide what kind of repair you're doing. And it can be a little bit susceptible. You know, Changing a headlight globe, is that heavy or is it hard? I'll leave, leave that up to you to decide. But it can be a little bit difficult trying to get the info out of this, but take your time, persevere with it, and it's well worth owning one of these. Now, as I said, that's for a GS or a general service vehicle. So if you have a different vehicle like, like myself, which I have a FFR, you can actually then buy a supplement manual, which I've got, to go with your regular manual. This is why you need a big, bookshop, uh, big bookshelf when you uh, own a couple of Land Rovers. And yeah, as I fumbled before, it is like owning a bookshelf. So they're the manuals. But then one thing that will make your life so much easier and easier than selling your Land Rover actually is getting one of these and I've got these for my series one two and three I haven't found one for the Parenti yet but I'm working on that and this is parts catalog parts catalog is the best thing since sliced bread I don't care what anyone else says it is the best. I paid under $50 Australian for this probably 10 years ago. And, mate, if you want to make money off something, this is where it's at. This, gosh, if I had a dollar for every time I used this, I'd be a millionaire. They're fantastic. And I'll, I'll just touch on why. When you call someone up on the phone, if, if that's what you do these days, or if you're trolling through the internet and you just can't find that one annoying part that you need to find, what do you do? You just have a flick through your parts manual and you look at the exploded diagram that you're after, pick your particular part, refer it to your actual serial number, and then you just type it into Dr. Google. What happens? The part pops up. I know. Or if you're like me and you're calling someone on the phone, you just rattle it off and they'll go, no worries. Because every Land Rover parts specialist has a heap of these parts catalogs. So there's, there's no need for half an hour of charades over the phone as to what on earth you're trying to describe and then waiting for, I don't know, two weeks in the post to get to get the wrong part. It's kind of right, but it's kind of wrong too. So parts catalogs are absolutely spot on. And this one, they're doing a reprint. So I think you can still purchase it and I think it's still around about the same price as what I paid for that 10 years ago. Now the other one that is really, really handy, and as you guessed, it's another parts catalog, but this is for the Series 3. And this actually covers everything with the Series 3. None of this supplement stuff for this. So basically all the two, uh, two and a quarter litre petrol engine variants covers all that, 2.6, covers the Stage 1, which is fantastic. But one of the great things about these manuals too is many of us, and 
well, I should say all of us, sorry, didn't mean to be rude there, but all of us have other things going on in our lives. We don't rebuild and fiddle around with these all the time as much as we would like to. So usually something will remain half pulled apart for maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, hopefully no more. And then when we come back to it, we've got to go, well, how on earth does that go back together again? I cannot remember for the life of me. And it can be really frustrating. With these exploded diagrams, and obviously this is just an example, you can see how it all goes back together. And you can actually cross-reference the parts and go with the descriptions and figure out how it all goes, how it should be. Awesome. Awesome. And I have done that. I have done that. And the other thing is, too, if you're unsure of your nuts and bolts or thread type, you can actually, and I've done this too, particularly when I was starting out, because I didn't know anything about BSF and Whitworth and all that kind of jazz, I'd actually take these to my nut and bolt specialist, and I'd say, I'm, I'm after this one. And they, they'd go and find the right bolt and the right nut, and they'd, and they'd give it to you. So, really, really well worth it. So, it might look like a lot of books, but they're useful books. So, yeah. Anyway, as always, I probably waffled on a little bit too much, and I do apologise, but, you know, I just know that this is going to save you so much time, and using these books as I have over the years can just make the experience so much more enjoyable, and... There's nothing better than learning while working on your Land Rover. It's one of the great things and the great joys of why I love working on these vehicles because, you know, I've been doing it for over 15 years now and still, I'm still learning new stuff. You know, there's not many vehicles where that's the case. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and if you are enjoying the content here at Seriously Series then I really do encourage you to check us out on Patreon. You can click on the square pink icon at the top right hand corner of your screen which is the Patreon icon and if you're new to the channel and you're just trying to figure out who we are, what we do and all the rest then please click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too, it doesn't cost you a cent and that way you get weekly updates as the videos are released. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in our next video. Catch you then.